Hey everyone, uh, you may know this already, but it's David Gilmore Month here on my channel, wherein we're doing loads of covers, tutorials, tone analysis videos, a few top ten lists, etc, etc, etc. And today we're going to do a tone analysis of the solo from Young Lust from The Wall. Now, I personally use Bias FX2 guitar software for my covers and recordings. However, these tone settings should get you close regardless of what you use, be it software or amp and pedal board. Now, with that said, this one has just a great gritty and uh, aggressive Gilmore tone on it. And when I first sat down to uh, try and dial it in, using one of my regular Gilmore Bias FX presets as a bass, it all sounded like shit. Uh, I would like, why the hell does this sound so bad, I thought. I'm playing it just fine, but it sounds like garbage. Uh, off to the internet I went to do a little bit of research on this solo. Research complete, I sat down and restarted my tone quest and ended up with something that I think is pretty close and sounded a hell of a lot better. Now, typical of Gilmore's distorted tone during this era, it's pretty well documented that his main setup for gain was a boost pedal into an electro harmonics big muff into his trusty high watt dr103 amplifier that i had uh, but with far too much gain i discovered just muddying everything up and, and killing all the clarity of notes i was also missing a key element of this solo's tone as well a flanger. Uh, if Gilmore wasn't using Leslie-style rotating speakers, as he was wont to do a fair bit, he was using the Electroharmonics Electric Mistress flanger for his warble modulation when desired. Now, at different settings, flangers, rotating speakers, chorus pedals, uh, univide pedals, all give that kind of rotating warble effect that is quite common in a fair amount of Gilmore's work over the years. Now, in the case of Young Lust, apparently it was the flanger that he indeed did use. However, I went with a chorus uh, to achieve somewhat of the same effect, and it sounds pretty good, if I do say so myself. The, uh, the Bias FX2 uh, flanger just wasn't uh, really cutting it for me. And uh, the one final piece of the puzzle that I had wrong was far too much delay. Now, Normally, one can't go wrong dialing in the tone for a Gilmore solo with 350 milliseconds of delay and four or five repeats set pretty high in the mix. That's the general norm for David Gilmore. Here, all the notes were getting lost and, and crapping out all over each other, but uh, once I dialed back the delay substantially, my tone was starting to take much better shape. All right then, enough chit chat. Uh, let's give the solo a listen, and then we'll open up Bias FX2 and have a closer look at my signal chain and all of its settings. But first up, and as per usual with Gilmore, this one was played on a Stratocaster, and in this case, in the bridge pickup position. So let's check out the solo and the tone. All right then, here's our signal chain for this one, for the uh, solo to Young Lust. We, uh, first in our chain, we're gated because we've got a drive, a boost, uh, going into a fuzz pedal, going into the amp, creating a heck of a lot of noise. So I've got this gated. Uh, then we're into compression. Again, compression I use with a distorted tone. I use it just for it to get a little bit more sustain. I've got everything right up the middle, except for the uh, sustain, which is almost at three o'clock. Into a Tube Screamer type pedal here. David Gilmore, uh, back in, you know, the 70s and whatnot, he used a lot of boost pedals, but he used a color sound power boost. Uh, I'm using a Tube Screamer here just to give a boost to this uh, big muff here. Drive 
all the way off, uh, tone at about one o'clock, level right up the middle into the Big Muff. And here's where I was making a bit of a mistake because I usually, when I'm using the Big Muff, I have the game way up here on seven or eight and it was just way too much. So I, I dialed it back to about 10, 30, 11 o'clock here. Uh, I've got my volume on about one, my tone on about one, two o'clock maybe and uh, really started coming together once I dialed back some of the gain into uh, the Hi-Watt DR-103 that David Gilmore used a lot and uh, as usual the gain is way down here because he's using pedals for his gain down on three just uh, you know an amp like this that would be just at the point of breakup uh, bass treble and mids are all pretty much at about three o'clock bass rolled off just a little bit less presence right up the middle and our master is on full uh, four by twelve cabinet here uh, microphone placements almost in the middle just off center and instead of using a uh, flanger like I said I used a chorus to get that little bit of warble uh, <clears throat> that this solo has and a uh, little bit of treble you know instead of having these right up the middle I've got uh, about two o'clock on the treble one o'clock on the bass intensity at about 11 o'clock width up at about uh, two o'clock and our rate fairly low because you don't want a too wah, 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 you know you just want a nice little warble and uh, that's back at about eight o'clock and uh, delay, we've got it set, uh, we, we, I don't even know if we need a delay on this one, but uh, I've got it set pretty low anyway, at about 280 milliseconds with about three, three repeats. And I've got the level quite low, so you're not really hearing those repeats uh, drowning out other notes. And uh, reverb, another mistake I made. I was using plate reverb, as I usually do with David Gilmore, and it was just far too echoey. Uh, it was, uh, it didn't sound very good. So I went with a hall reverb, a medium hall reverb, at about 20% here. This is on 22, 20, 21%. And uh, it started sounding much better as well when I uh, when I did not use plate reverb for a change, and uh, and that's it. That's it for the uh, the signal chain for this one. I uh, I certainly hope that helped you out. Were you looking to uh, try and recreate this tone if you liked what I put down? And uh, that's it. All right then. What do you think? Pretty close. God, I hope so, <laughs> or this video is just a big waste of time and effort. Uh, I think it's pretty close. Uh, I'll upload this preset to the Bias FX Tone Cloud with the prefix uh, KDA, so it's easy to find, should you want to download this one and add it to your tone arsenal. Well, that's it for now. Hope you're well in your little guitar corner of the world, wherever that may be, and uh, that you may have found this helpful and maybe useful. Uh, take care of yourselves and those around you, and we'll see you next time. Cheers.